All right, folks. So today we're going to look at some functionality with a nano VNA. Now this is a bigger nano VNA. And the reason we're using this one is because it's easier to see with my camera, but this will work with any nano VNA. We're going to look at matching networks, particularly LC networks. And what I have here is just a, a load or a dummy load that I made out of um, some PCB board, a SMA connector and some resistors here. These are 1000 ohm resistors. And what I did is I soldered them on here. Look at that solder job. That's good, boy. Anyhow, I put them in series, and this gives me about a 250 ohm load. Now, this is very low reactance or almost non-reactive. What we're going to do is we're going to connect this up to the Nano VNA, and we're going to get an SWR reading and measurement. We're going to use the LC match function to design a LC filter or LC network, and I have one here um, that we're gonna use to bring this into resonance. Now you might say, well, why would I wanna do that? Or why would I need to do that? A lot of times we use antennas, uh, like a mono band antenna. So let's just say I put up a uh, 40 meter vertical, for example, and it's not quite right. And what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna trim it because maybe it's not a wire vertical antenna or something like that. So hams will put a matching network at the feed point of that antenna to match their 50 ohm uh, coaxial cable, for example, to the impedance of the, uh, of the antenna. So we're gonna, we're gonna mimic or, or replicate that with this particular device. And then we're gonna use the output of our nano VNA to design a uh, LC network that will bring that into resonance or match it. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me set this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have connected our load to our VNA. And then you can see here is the yellow line for SWR. Now it's flat because like I mentioned, this doesn't have any reactance, this load. And what you can see up here is that we are at a frequency of 13.197. And so what I actually wanna move that over to around 14.2. Now each time I hit this button, what it's doing is it's moving my uh, marker over one data point. And because we only have a limited number of data points, you can see it jump a few kilohertz uh, each time I push the button. And here we are at, uh, well, let's see where we are right here. So we're at 14231. Uh, and then down here, you can kind of see on the Smith chart that we are in the capacitive range. And that all makes sense for that reading. So what I can do is I can go in here in the stimulus and then I can turn on my LC match. And what it does is it gives me a data table here. Now on a traditional nano VNA, not this one, you would go from the main menu into measure and then you have LC matching under that. And then I have two rows here of data, row one and row two. And it's kind of hard to read, but there's a sh there is a loading shunt reading and I do not need a loading shunt. I'm sorry, a source shunt. Um, and then there is a series component value here in row one, it is 1.09 microhenries, which would tell you that it's an inductor. And then in row two, it tells you that it is, uh, looks like 114 picofarad, which would tell you that it's a capacitor. And then um, you have another um, row here, another column here, and this is for your load shunt. Now I'm, I'm talking about uh, the shunts and in series and stuff like that. So let me just pull this image up real quick. And this is a picture that I drew and then what you can see from our source, and our source would be our radio, is on the left, and then all the way on the right is our load, which would be our antenna. And it shows you where these components need to go. So if you have a source shunt, it needs to go between your source and series component, and it needs to shunt to ground. And in the um, series, it just goes directly along your center pin, your center conductor. Uh, your, your component would go there, or if you needed to have a load shunt, then it would go after your series component, but before your load. Hopefully that makes sense for everybody. Let me go ahead and turn this off. And we're going to use this uh, little device here. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Can I focus, please? And what this is, is it's a nano VNA test board. And then here you can see we have a signal that comes in and we have a signal that comes out. And so for this one, what we did is we put an inductor in series, and then we have a short or a shunt to ground with this capacitor. And if I take a look at these, it's saying I need 1.09 uh, microhenries for my inductor and 56.2 picofarads for my capacitor. So what I did is I went into some of my parts bins. Let me show you those real quick. So 
here are some kits that I have. And what I was able to do when I come down here, I've got 47 picofarads and I have 68 picofarads. So I don't have the exact measurement uh, of 56, but we're just going to use 47 for the example in this video. And uh, that should give you an idea. And then I just have these inductors here um, from Bojack. And uh, when I open these up, I don't want to spill them. I got to be careful. What you can see here is I have uh, one microhenry. So that's really close to what we needed uh, for our 1.09 microhenry. So I just took I just took one of these and that's what we used. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to put this device in line with the load that we that we have. So I'm going to do that real quick and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back and what you can see is, is that the SWR that we're looking at here has now dropped to uh, 1.45. I think it was around 4.8, 4.9 beforehand. And that brings this closer into resonance than it was before. Now, it's not perfect because I, I didn't have the exact values of the things that I wanted to use. But you can also see on the Smith chart reading, we are very close to the center bullseye, which is exactly where we want to be for something like this. So I can use uh, matching networks to tune or bring antennas into resonance, uh, which is a very handy thing that hams have been doing for a really long time, instead of using the tuner. Now what I wanted to do is show what would happen if we continue to move our marker down to the resonant point. And then what you can see is that the circuit that we built on our Nano VNA test board is actually uh, resonant at 16.135. So we would still have to do some work there, but uh, we've gotten a lot closer. Uh, and in some cases, if I go moving this thing way, way, way over here, you can see the values of the components would change. And in some cases, you'll even see a source shunt come up in here, but uh, we're not seeing that right now. Anyhow, um, like I mentioned, I had gotten asked a question on how to use this LC match function on an nano VNA. So I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to show that to everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Totally appreciate it.